I, ne <laughs> I never heard of this thing. And uh, so I don't think that was one if of the- If Shankar hasn't heard of it, yeah, then yeah, Aadhaar yeah. wasn't I, taking that into consideration. Yeah, so we looked at the experiences of other countries and that of states like Andhra Pradesh had a lot of experience in biometrics, but we didn't uh, look at this. And uh, yeah, already there are some yogasans that teach you how to exercise your eyes, which become weak and a uh, lot of asanas for bad posture, computer, right? So I'm sure something will come up. Questions? Sir, you at the end, the very last, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you. Yeah, I think the it's a mic. Yes. Over there. Oh, okay. Sir, you first and then the lady. Yes. <laughs> I already called you out, so please go ahead. I just wanted to emphasize on one part. Uh, the subject of the panel says creating a safer world also. The safer part has been missing in most of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we are debating whether it's going to be a safer world or not. Uh, and looking at all of the all of the ramifications, I think it's for you to draw your own conclusions. Whether I just wanted to not. add one thing. Uh, as a matter of uh, futuristic policy or step or action, there should be some mechanism to introduce watchdogs. Not watchdogs, actually, people who study different kind of interactions between technology and society in real time, not as a history which comes to us after 10 years. And whatever you are saying, good parts and bad parts, are highlighted to the people in general and specific uh, people who are impacted by it. So that kind of a mechanism and that kind of study groups should be part of the thing. And whether that is happening or not is my question. Well, I think um, on the panel here, we have historians. So um, let's, let's defer the question to another panel, I think. Uh, the lady at the back. With a question? Yes. yes. Uh, good evening. My question is addressed both to Shankar and Aparna. Uh, Shankar, you were specifically talking about building, uh, maybe using technology to build better behavior, human behavior. So can you build, is it possible to build, say, good incentives, stroke alternatively disincentives? Um, say, for example, you see so much of, you know, um, throwing ca trash all around the place. So is it possible to build in a mechanism to build in, you know, incentives that could be loaded up towards the end of the year, linking up to your ID, whatever, that could translate into something substantive? That's exactly what China is doing, yes. Is that the, possible? The Do you think that... The credit score that uh, Aparna spoke about. So if, if, if that's possible. And similarly, uh, adding on to a question that my previous, uh, you know, the person asked, so possibly if the government has tracked and got information on certain kind of behavior of people that's leading to suggest that could potentially be, uh, you know, some kind of a terrorist plan being built up somewhere, possibly they could go and intercept and prevent some situations such as that. So could we use technology to augment this sort of a... I think all of that is already happening. I mean, so the first part of your question, China is already doing that, social rating. I think you already spoke about it. And in terms of uh, intelligence, I mean, so government intelligence does precisely that. And, 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 I, and I assume on behalf of the Indian state <laughs> as a citizen that they are doing what, what, you know, what most states do. State apparatuses are equipped and have the sole purpose of, uh, of, you know, defending territorial integrity, etc. So I think those things are pretty much already happening. I mean, I don't see, I don't see any room for doubt in terms of whether that's happening or not. Um, I don't think this panel is in any way equipped to answer that kind of question, but I'm, sh but I, but I'm pretty certain there were panels before, th in fact, the very panel before yes. this addressed that question quite centrally um, uh, in terms of technology and uh, uh, cybersecurity, etc. I guess I, I just want to add, like, um, with respect to incentives that you can create. So China has maybe created one kind of incentive, but at the end of the day, like, whatever incentives that you create is, um, it really depends how you as people use these incentives which you create. So, for example, with the blockchain, you can create completely new incentives. Um, you can enable these kinds of micropayments, which weren't possible up until today, um, where maybe like if you do a good action, I pay you 
a micro amount of money. Um, if that's like 0 0.001 cents, maybe I'm okay paying that. Maybe like that's not very expensive. And that way you can create like a positive upward spiral. Um, what China has created in some sense might be a downward negative spiral. And I think when people say, um, like to address your comment of is technology creating a safer world or not, I don't think technology is not creating a safer world. I think it's how people use this technology which makes it a safer world or not. Um, and I think there are lots of instances where technology is being used in such an amazing way. Like for example, people often think the blockchain or Bitcoin is so unsafe. Um, there's gonna be terrorist activity with it. But that's not necessarily true. You can run um, certain kinds of taint analysis on it to detect where money is going, um, whether like certain kinds of addresses are, are doing like illegal activities. I definitely think you can build technology to counter the effects, the bad effects of other technology. And I just think we don't focus enough on that aspect. We focus a lot of, on like, oh, technology is, can be used for bad, but there's so much good that comes out of it too. One last question, and uh, yeah. sorry, that's all we have time for Hi. today. Yes, sir. Uh, I have the mic. Is <laughs> yes. Should I go ahead? Yeah. Uh, so this is first to Aparna. Uh, uh, you know, the, you, Asimov's uh, laws of robotics, right, uh, do no harm to people, right, and obey a, a human master unless it violates law one. And third, protect yourself as long as you don't violate law two and law one. <laughs> right? Isn't that generalizable? Um, can you repeat the first couple? The first law is do no harm to people. Mm -hmm. The second is obey a human master mm -hmm. as long as you're not harming a human. So as long as you're not violating law one. Mm -hmm. And the third law is protect yourself as long as you don't violate either law two or law one. Mm -hmm. And that's Asimov's laws of robotics. Mm -hmm. Now that can be applied to algorithms, it can be applied to just about any technology. Yeah. So why not generalize? I, I definitely agree with that. And I think like if everyone in society acted like that, then all Make it a law, know. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, if everyone in society obeyed those laws, then society would exclusively be created for good causes. But unfortunately, one, not everyone knows that law. Punish them <laughs> if they obey, don't obey the law, right? And a quick comment to Shankar. Um, Brian Christian has written this book called The Most Human Human. Right? Most Human? Human. Uh, it actually emanated from the Turing test mm -hmm. where the human that beat the computers most would be given the award as the most human human. And from that, there's lots of generalizations of how do you make humans more human. So, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a book worth. So I'll look it up. But I'm not sure whether the Asimov's laws can be used. I'm yeah. not sure it's so simplistic. You use that AI algorithm to find financial fraud. The objective of that is to find the people and punish them. I don't also, know whether that's. I think all of, our, you know, all of the learning is, is teaching computers to be better than human beings, more efficient, faster, and everything. So when you're doing that, there will come a time, you know, as predicted, that, you know, the machines will learn faster than human beings and, you know, overtake the intelligence. Function efficiency. Yes. Yeah. In terms of function and efficiency. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, but even so, I mean, I think so, I'm, you know, bring, I'm mean, thinking of Harold Lasky here, right, the, the political scientist who said, for example, that my freedom to swing my arm ends where the nose of the other person begins. And I think that fundamentally is what yeah. the law of the world. It, it, yes, of course, you find those people and you punish them. That would be the whole idea of having a law, right? So it's about not harming a human being doesn't mean that they get away with harming other people. So the thing, I mean, so, so cause no harm or do no harm would be central to that. And in fact, I mean, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, to me, it's amusing that she's not read Asimov. <laughs> and, and she's into tech, you know, generational, entirely generational. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the last, sir, I called you out. Are you there? I think um, 
thank you so much. Are we done with the question? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, in this really busy world of folks, buzzes, email notifications, Slack notifications, I, I just wonder what is the greatest skill a creative person can have? And if the audience wants to come in on that last question, just one word, what is the greatest skill a human being, creative human being can have? Some answers? Yes, sir? Absolutely. Any other answers? Patience, thank you. Yes. Emotions, yes, thank you.